Well, you did a interview with Details Magazine at one point. Okay. And you mentioned, you know, Kim Kardashian and how she was amazing. She was a good friend. She was good people. Right. Was it more than a friend? Um, many, many years ago, yeah. Yeah, I just, I don't, I don't want to, you know, like, I don't like to choose to talk about stuff like that. Like, that was yesterday, A, and B, you know, people will move on with their lives, and it's not, it's not cool to talk about stuff like that, you know. Um, I have a lot of respect for her husband, and, and, you know, just, it's just not the, for me, the, the stuff I, I like to talk about. Well, you and Kanye were working together recently. Yeah. yeah so we, you were in the we, studio. We worked up work. in the studio. Um, I'm, I'm uh, slated to get in with him and do some stuff with him, like, real soon. So have you guys already worked on some stuff? No, not, we've been in the studio together, and we listened to stuff, and he, he was actually found some stuff he liked, so we're going to elaborate on that and, and make a record out of this piano figure that he liked. So, so you might be on Swish. Uh, I hope. I hope. I'm very closely knit with his, uh, his people. Yeah. Well, sure. aren't you being managed by someone with good music? Uh, you know, we're um, right now um, we're just starting our relationship together and we're seeing where it goes. And, and it's, uh, it's a little too soon to, um, to, to announce anything like that yet. We're going to be doing official press releases and stuff when we, at the appropriate time. Sure. Yeah. Well, at one point you were working with all the biggest A-list stars. Like you were doing hit songs for Beyonce. You were, uh, like who, who were some of the other biggest stars at the time? Christina Aguilera Christina at the Aguilera. time. Christina Aguilera. Um, you know, I mean, pretty much everything. Everything. There was a story where you left Janet Jackson in the studio <laughs> waiting for five hours. It was at my house. Yeah. At your house. So she showed up at your house. And she was waiting for me, yeah. For five hours. Yeah. Did she finally leave? No. Oh, she actually waited until you got there. Yeah. And she, Janet is awesome. I, I mean, you know, she's no stranger to seeing people that are not right. You know, she's, you know, she's You're right, a she's a Jackson. She's seen a lot. Um, and, you know, she, I, she always was sweet to me. I was irresponsible with that. And, you know, those days are long gone, man. My head got a little too big for its own good those days. And my brain got a little too small. Now, there was, I guess, a time when you decided to work on Paris Hilton's album rather than Christina Aguilera's album? Uh, no, that wasn't the case. That wasn't the case? It wasn't a choice. No, one had nothing to do with each other. Um, Christina and I had some arguments um, due to her management at the time. Um, it, was, it was like, um, and I never talked about this stuff before on camera, but there was, you know, a deal that I had made when I did the Stripped album, and I delivered for that album. So I felt like um, the only fair thing to do would be do the same deal again for the next album. Okay. And her management took the position that, you know, I just sold all these records because of her, and that I should just do the album for free. Hmm. You know, and whatever comes of it, comes of it. Um, and I looked at it in a way where I just made you an album that just sold you 15 million records. Hmm. I should be treated with, like, rewarded. Maybe you get You were the main producer on that album? On Stripped? Yeah. Yes. So that was your sound? Yeah. I did almost the whole album. Almost the whole album. Seven records on that album. And that was her big breakout album? Yeah. Yep. And I hope to work with her again someday. Just hopefully to make a fair deal. <laughs> I mean, would you say she has the strongest voice of, of any living singer right now? Oh, there's a lot of different singers out there. I mean, how can you compare apples and oranges? And yeah, but Christina Aguilera has something that's kind of... She has a special voice. She I has a special her. voice. There's a couple other special voices out there, too. I don't like to say the best in anything. Who else? Who's to say if I say, "Oh, Scott Storch, he's," I'm not the best at producing. There's other producers that I just have my thing that I do, and it's my skill. I play keys, and I'm able to, I'm able to do cartwheels around a lot of people in that department. But there's other styles, and there's other things that work that are insane. Who else would you put in the category of, of her level of Christina singing? Christina Aguilera. Um, at that level, Beyonce, Adele, 
um, you know, many others. <laughs> yeah, but she's special. She is 100% special. I, I would say that she has a stronger voice than Beyonce. You do? I would say that. <laughs> I think Beyonce has more hit records. And, you know, I've worked has, in the studio I, with I think, B. I think Beyonce. Beyonce has one of the greatest voices that music has ever, ever seen. Really? And power. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, she goes back to a level of a Patti LaBelle, of a Aretha Franklin, and some of the notes that she would hit, like, she doesn't even give you everything she has. Hmm. Some singers have to give you all their <laughs> over sing shit and this right. and that. She knows how to have control over that and give you the right amount. Okay. There's a lot of, there was a generation of a lot of over singing, I think, to me. I feel you. Riffing and doing ad libs in the fucking <laughs> first ver hook. <laughs> I feel you. So now you're in a in a rebuilding kind of mode right now. Mm -hmm. um, well, you had the the song with with Rick Ross and Chris Brown. Mm -hmm. What else? What else have have you had recently that sort of has hit? Um, I mean, I, there's you know I'm just finally getting back in the saddle. I got records that are popping up here and there, and you know a lot of them are gonna you know unfold soon. I have a, a record out on DJ Khaled's album called Every Time We Come Around with French Montana. Okay. I got another record that's coming out with Chris Brown called Shattered um, for his European release um, and many other things. Okay. Know, records are circulating. So the best is yet to come. But what do you think is different now in terms of your musical ear than at the very height when you just had hit on top of hit on top of hit? Um, I think I'm way nastier now. Yeah, I have um, I have better music sounds like like different different uh, um, new rig that's just incredible, it's just stacked with a contact library that's insane, um, and I'm not like I'm in a relationship. I'm not chasing after women. I'm focused. Like I feel like I graduated. Like I'm not. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything. I know that the clubs and the partying is always going to be there when I want it. Yeah. Um, so I'm just, a, my work ethic is just crazy. So I'm getting a lot better and more volume in, in my production, you know? You were in the studio with uh, Post Malone recently. Yeah, went real well. He cut a ill record. Um, but yeah, that's just, just part of the process, man. Just going through it. And uh, I'm going to flood the market, man. I mean, what's different now about the music industry than it was... 20 years ago? Um, it's not a front-end market. You don't get paid for records like that. Uh, right, because at, at your height, how much were you getting, like 100000 a track? Yeah. Now you make the money off the publishing and the songwriter shares and the radio and the licensing and stuff like that. But right, so you're not getting the big There's still plenty of money to make in this business if you do it right. Yeah, and I don't think... Music becomes just a place, a forum for people to see you or discover you for other big deals. So do you do stuff like, I mean, outside of just producing for, you know, hip hop and R&B artists, are you, are you doing other shit as well, business-wise? Yeah. Yeah. Doing some television stuff. And I'm even starting to do some movie scoring stuff as well. Really? Yeah. So I'm just, I'm vibing, man. Right now is a good time for me. Yeah. I'm trying to stay out of the uh, public eye a lot and just when people hear my name, it's when they see it on the credits for the album. Right. And your name on the checks as well. Yeah. Leo froze it, man, you know. We can't we can't we can't do it right now. Right, because this was the, the Migo Stuggin project, right? Yeah. That was gonna be a big project too, but Leo, you know, blocked the play. Mike K. Williams told me he was like, if you want if you wanna make it in this industry you have to switch it up because you just want to be typecast, what, you just playing all gangster movies? 